Here's my problem from uh, probability web work, problem number two. It talks about three different events, A1, A2, and A3. They partition the sample space and they give us those probabilities. And then they give us conditional probabilities for E depending on if we knew what had happened prior to that. So le let's do a, a, a tree diagram here. If, if we happen to know that event A occurs, which happens with a probability of, of uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 is the probability that uh, we, we get an A. If that happens, then the probability of getting an E event E is going to be 0.5. That means the probability of not getting E is also going to be 0.5. The other things that can happen is that I can get A2. It tells me that the probability of event A2 is 0.2. So let me write A2 on this branch so we can keep track of that. So now there's two things that can happen there. Either I get E or I don't get E. If I do get E, the probability of that, the probability of E, given that I've done A2, given that I've gone on A2, the probability that I'm going to get uh, event E is going to be a 0.4. That means the probability that I don't get that is going to be a 0.6. So going down on this second branch is the not getting E. The other possibility is that I get event uh, A3. So there's a 0 0.6 chance of that happening. I was wrong up here, wasn't I? Of, of event 1, there's a 0 0.2 chance. So that should have been a 0 0.2 up there. And this is a 0 0.3 for event A3. Uh, event A1 was 0.2, event A2 was 0.2, and event A3 was 0.3 probability. To get an E after getting event A3, that's what this is saying, the probability of getting E after getting event A3 is a 0.6, and so the probability of not getting it will be a 0.4. Now we could figure out all the end probabilities here. A point two and then a point five that would be a a point one zero a point two and then a point five would be another point one zero a point two and then a point eight would be a point zero eight a point two and then a point six would be a point one two a point six and then a point six would be a point three six a point six and then a point four would be a a point two four and of course you can add those up and and it's going to be uh be one. I'll let you verify that that's the case. All right. So let's worry about the probability of getting event E. Here's the idea. Where can we get an E? Well we can either get it here or here. Just kind of draw these in in blue. There's a way to get E. There's a way to get E. And there's a way to get E. So the probability of getting E is going to be a 0.1, a 0 0.08, a 0.36, that adds up to be a 14 of 0.54. Okay, and I've already put that in and verified that that's correct. Okay, let's look at this next one. We're worried about the probability of getting A1 given that we've had event E occur. Okay. Now I'll need to use a formula here. The fact is that, that the formula for a conditional probability 
is the intersection of these two probabilities, A1 and E, divided by the probability of E. Okay. Now, to have A1 and E, that means it would have to be coming up this branch right here. A1 and E, that's the only way that we can get that. So this number on, on top there is going to be a point one zero divided by the probability of E, which we just calculated before, is a point five four. And so I, instead of actually dividing that out, I ask WebWork to do it. And you can see that I've checked it and I've got that right. Okay, now it'll be the similar idea on those other two. Good luck on that problem.